Over $150 billion has been wiped out across 15 top cryptocurrencies in market cap within three days. And this is all because of FTX, the exchange behind the token FTT. Now, on November 6th, the token's value began to fall, losing more than 80% within a span of about 72 hours. Now, this is crazy because FTX used to be seen as this unstoppable giant and survivor in this suffering and painful market. But as of now, it has seriously broken the cryptocurrency industry. So so here is what went all wrong. FTX was created by SBF, which is short for Sam Bangman Fried. He was once known as the savior of the cryptocurrency industry and he kind of looks like a fat Jesus. And the media began referring to FTX as JP Morgan of the crypto world, highlighting their stability and trustworthiness. So where it all began was Sam Bangman Fried. He started a crypto trading firm called Alameda Research in 2017. And two short years later, he started a crypto exchange called FTX. And that is what the industry labels as a centralized exchange. Now there was some skepticism that these companies had some conflict of interest because SBF held major holdings in both of these companies and the insider knowledge from each of these companies could be used for the benefit of another which then highlights a potential for conflict of interest and to this potential conflict of interest SBF has commented that they are just two separate and independent entities now to me, that doesn't really address the question of conflict of interest, as we already know that FTX and Alameda Research are separate entities and registered under different company names. But no real robust further questioning came out of this because there wasn't really any regulatory framework to police behavior like this. And everybody just moved on because FTX was growing super fast and was too big to question. Now, when SBF started FTX, it wasn't too hard for him to raise a few billion dollars. So, you know, we'd raised a few billion dollars over the course of the last uh, last couple of years and we're a profitable business. And once he had raised all those billions, the exchange grew very, very quickly and very, very large. And it wasn't too long since FTX became the fourth largest exchange for futures trading. And so it isn't a surprise that celebrities and key opinion leaders in the space has quickly jumped on board to advertise and promote this exchange as being the most secure and the easiest and the best exchange for retail as well as institutions institutional investors in cryptocurrency. Now, it's important to note that I don't think any of the current atrocities were ever foreseeable by endorsers. How one man decides to do something wrong in the future is not only hard, but impossible to predict. So it wasn't long that FTX grew enough to go head to head with Binance, the biggest exchange who clocked in a whopping $76 billion trading volume in one day as the biggest crypto exchange. And what's interesting is that Binance actually invested into FTX early on, which was super good for Binance as FTX grew super fast and super large. And SBF with his mega influence through social media as well as super deep pockets, he had a crack at recovering the crypto markets when the first bear market came. And the narrative that was painted back then was that SBF said crypto prices crashing was not fair to its customers. So when many firms busted out during the bear market, he came and rescued many of the struggling companies spending his billions. Now this is very ironic because he did exactly the opposite of that. There's also been arguments that FTX's behavior and investment and rescue endeavor and has been the artificial igniter of that second bull cycle started in July 2021 to early November 2021, which is a massive outcome for a potential influence that he has had over the crypto market. But this messianic save of crypto didn't last in his positive image when Coindesk published a report on Alameda's balance sheet. And according to the leaked data, Alameda has $14.6 billion worth of assets as of June 30. And it was found that the balance sheet was full of FTT coins, which was created by the exchange itself. And their investments rested on a foundation largely made up of a coin that their sister company FTX invented, not on an independent asset like fiat or other cryptocurrencies or even other financial vehicles, which then led the idea that the ties between Alameda Research and FTX was uncomfortably close. Alameda CEO Carolyn Ellison, who is making absolutely tracks on social media, also tweeted that this was only a partial balance sheet and there's more of the balance sheet that isn't reflected in the report that was published by Coindesk. Ellison further responded that there were hedges in place and they have returned most of Alameda's debts by now. But the markets, they didn't really buy into this BS because the price of FTT fell miserably after that. And it's no surprise that traders of FTX began to withdraw all of their funds from FTX. Now on November 6th, Binance CEO CZ also tweeted that it will be liquidating remaining FTT positions on their books. And this is interesting 
I think this was a smart play by CZ to kill the competition and I will cover more on this later. But this led to markets tumbling violently and the withdrawals went skyrocketing on F. FTX. And of course, it's no surprise when FTX started to have backlogs on withdrawals, which then got the people even more nervous and even more people jumped on their withdrawals. And by November 7th, the amount of withdrawals grew to $6 billion worth of crypto. And the day after, FTT dropped massively in price and Binance stepped in once again on Twitter saying that it would buy the company. Okay. Interesting. Back then, it seemed that FTX could have been now rescued and their liquidity issues may be solved for now. By the 9th of November, Binance backed out. Binance basically came out and said, hey, FTX, we're not buying you anymore. It is basically the British moment for Binance. And by the 11th of November, it was reported that FTX dipped into customer accounts to fund risky bets on Alameda's investments. So all the initial worry that existed at Alameda and FTX was too close to each other and there was gonna be conflict of interest, it was basically fully realized as the unexpected transfer of billions in customer funds was made from FTX to Alameda Research. So there's no surprise that SEC and DOJ are investigating FTX now. And the the man for the job is obviously our mate Gary Gensler. And he very accurately commented that they take people's money, they borrow against it without much disclosure, and they trade against their customers. That is very, very dark. And soon, Sam Bankman Fry admitted that he couldn't honor withdrawals as their collateral has been dropping in value and can't be liquidated. And so Adam Levine, no, not that Adam Levine, but Adam B. Levine of Coindesk made a very interesting remark that applies to not only FTX, but also the whole of crypto market. He said, a lot of this stuff is about confidence. People who need to believe you about a certain thing believe that you are trustworthy and well capitalized and a lot of times appearances trump reality when it comes to this stuff. And only when the veneer of that confidence seems to fade, then that's when you find out actually these people weren't really what they represented in the past. So on the 11th, FTX files for bankruptcy along with Alameda Research and SBF quit his job as CEO of FTX. FTX then later said that there was a potential hack where more than $500 million worth of crypto is now missing, which was then later discovered that it was Bahamas regulators seizing assets. Yes, this is as crazy and wild west as it gets everybody. And what is even more sad is that FTX executives knew that exchange was using customers funds for Alameda research. And because FTX was such a large exchange, this bankruptcy has left many traders, both retail and institutional in a limbo with lots and lots of money stuck at this exchange unable to be recovered. And this has rippled out to exchanges becoming more forthcoming with disclosures as we see Kraken, Binance and BitGet making such announcements. And we can see even Binance has even gone to the lengths of publishing their live balance sheet on CoinMarketCap which is a website that they own themselves as well. And here I wanna highlight that Binance is also in a similar boat as FTX when it comes to holding its own coins because Binance does hold a fair bit of its own BNB and BUSD. But the thing is Binance doesn't really have its own Alameda research, at least one that isn't too publicized yet. But it really rests on this one man, CZ, to do the right thing and not siphon off the customer's money to do other risky and stupid things. But with a lack of regulatory framework, who are we to know whether they have made a full disclosure or whether they will act in accordance with the best interests of their customer funds. But there is still hope in that atrocity such as this now points to a regulated era where during the hard times, your money can actually be protected and the regulators can actually take the front foot in protecting retailers' investment funds. Either way, with crypto as it stands for now, just risk money that you can afford to lose fully. By the way, for people who want to time the bottom of crypto market, here is JP Morgan who reckons Bitcoin is going to hit 13K soon because of this FTX saga. And as for Sam Bankman-Fried, well, he's doing well, loving life, enjoying Thanksgiving with his family at a really, really nice house and get your popcorn ready for this one. Like, share and subscribe. See you next time.